We're the largest snacking company in the world. Is that everyone in the business is a leader and have a role to play. So it just naturally made sense that, you know, my career would progress. And I wish someone had told me when I was in high school that that was an option. It's all about maintaining relationships and... We have such a wide array of academic backgrounds and the SEEK has a strong network of women here to help you. Well, hey guys, so today we are joined by Craig, who works for BAE Systems. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you. So firstly, can you tell us a bit about BAE Systems? Who are you guys and what is it that you actually do? Well, BAE Systems is a, is a big organisation, uh, you know, which is a global organisation predominantly working in the defence sector. Uh, we have businesses uh, across the US, the UK, Europe, Middle East, Asia Pacific. Uh, and we tend to serve government customers. We do all sorts of exciting stuff. We build warships, we build submarines, we build fighter jets, uh, we build drones, uh, you know, high-speed weapons. Uh, lots of really exciting stuff here in VA systems. That sounds so cool. <laughs> so how did you get into uh, working for BAE Systems? What's your current role and what do you do and, and how have you ended up working working in this field, I guess? Oh, well, that's, that's a bit of a long journey. Uh, my, my current role is I'm the Managing Director for BAE Systems Maritime Australia. So we are responsible for building the nine anti-suffering warfare frigates for the Commonwealth Government of Australia. We're also responsible for building sovereign capability. What does that mean? That means that, you know, with the world's most advanced shipyard and new di digital technologies, we are looking you know, throughout the building of these warships to make sure that Australia has enough people, enough technology, enough tools, enough artifacts to be sovereign capable of, of designing, building and delivering its own warships in the future rather than buy, buy them from international companies. Mm. So I started way, way back in 1984 as a, as a technician apprentice for the Ministry of Defence in the UK. Uh, and I really got into that because I was always uh, interested in solving problems and mechanical things. I was always a Lego builder or a mechanical builder. Uh, and really the opportunity came along for me to join the Ministry of Defence as an apprentice. And I took that opportunity and they sent me you know, back to school. I went to university, went to the Royal Naval College in Greenwich, uh, did all sorts of training uh, and ended up working, you know, first and foremost in the nuclear submarine fleet in the UK in the early 90s. And since then I've held a number of roles for defence companies and lately BA Systems, who I've only been with for the last two years. Oh, cool. So this is like your little boy dream when you were building all the Lego, now you're actually doing it, but like in real life. <laughs> yeah, in, in today's environment, you know, I'm sure, I'm sure we still have Lego. I mean, I've seen, I watch all Lego masters, but you know, our environment building complex warships is much more advanced now. You know, it's much more virtual. It's very much like the gaming industry where we design ships virtually. Uh, you know, we wear, you know, the Google glasses. We have people walking around empty rooms designing artifacts and ships uh, and really some of the cool stuff that we do you know here uh, you know as part of our enterprise and certainly you know, over the next 30 years who knows where technology will take us yeah totally oh, that sounds great so what personal attributes do you think that you have um that's helped you sort of succeed in your role and what sort of personal attributes would you suggest um are are important for people to have you know, uh, working for BAE systems? Yeah, I mean, that's a really good question. I, I often think about how I've managed to get here where I am from having started as an apprentice. I, really, for me, uh, I've been quite lucky in the fact that I've always been given different challenges. But those personal attributes that was important to me was, was to have that drive to do things differently, uh, to continually, you know, ask to get the difficult jobs so that I can, you know, further my interest in problem solving, uh, you know, have the ambition to ask questions, uh, to never stop learning. You know, I, I continue to read about ships and submarines and new technologies. And you can, you can say I've been a bit of an early adopter as far as technology is concerned. So, you know, those attributes have really served me well 
in what was predominantly an engineering career, uh, albeit you know still still dabbling in science and technology in the way through. So I would say to all the young people out there, you know, if you've got one of those inquisitive minds, uh, you like problem solving, then you know being in our environment is is really a rewarding career. Um, so what advice would you give to students out there who are listening right now? It can be a confusing time and um, it certainly is with the whole COVID situation, but what advice would you give them and what advice, I guess, do you wish you received when you were at high school yourself? Yeah, and, well, again, probably like any young man at the time, I wasn't sure, you know, what I was going to do when really I was in school and making those hard decisions. I can remember conversations with my art teacher uh, you know, because I was giving up what was seen to be a glittering career in art to do engineering science at the time. And that was really because I was thinking about broadening my employment prospects. But, you know, I think the best advice I can give people is to, is to look, you know, for that challenge. Try and think about what opportunities, you know, may be out there in the future. And don't be afraid to take that leap and push yourself to do something different. I think my, my advice would be you know, try and get something that you like doing. Uh, and I think if you choose something that you like doing, you're more inclined uh, to give it a really good go. I, I didn't ever think that my career would be as long and as rewarding as it has been. Uh, but for any you know uh, young people out there who are you know particularly you know in the gaming industries and the technology led industries. You know, like science problems. You know, I think look for the connections that you know shipbuilding might offer. You know, those capabilities and attributes. So, uh, you know, don't be afraid. Uh, we we don't look for people coming in now with a hundred percent of the solution of requirement. You know, very much we work with every individual to give them the support and try and make them have a rewarding career. So, you know, I, I suspect my my overwhelming advice would be. Take a risk on yourself. You know, believe that you can do it. Yeah, absolutely. And it's so important to explore opportunities now. Like a lot of people, a lot of students out there may not have ever heard of BAE systems or had like a lot of um, misconceptions and preconceptions about shipbuilding. But from what you've explained so far, like it sounds so exciting and the technology is constantly changing and it's it's there's more to meet that meets the eye. Um, when it comes to shipbuilding, and I think you've you've definitely touched on it today, um, just you know even just a little bit with you know the opportunities and the exciting sort of upcoming prospects for uh, for shipbuilding. Um, if there are some students out there listening and they're thinking, what sort of pathways are available for me, sort of after school? What what's your suggestion there? What sort of pathways are there available? I think there's a whole variety of pathways uh, into the defence sector as well as shipbuilding. I think whether you're interested in, in apprenticeships you know, and everything as, as we've said from you know, boiler making to fabrication to welding to mechanical fitting, electrical engineering. I, I, again, the, the traditional days of you know, the, the shipbuilding sector being somewhere where we're asking you to swing hangers and do welding torches. You know, those, those days are long gone. We are now working with robotics, robotics, drones, automated vehicles. So traditional shipbuilding is, is not what you would think it to be. So, you know, taking that brave step of signing up for an apprenticeship and you, know, you can find those pathways you know, through our direct website. Uh, graduates, you know, we're always looking for graduates and we'll, you know, we're one of the biggest companies that go around in recruitment fairs, you know, looking to you know, make connections for internships whether that's through direct relationships or people that you know are already working within VA systems or connected to the defence business. So we, you know, we explore all pathways to make you know, uh, people interested in what we are doing and make them excited by the prospects of a 30-year career. We're very fortunate that in today's environment, we are still taking people on and lots of thousands of people uh, in fact, that can look forward to a long-term rewarding career that can offer global mobility, international travel, you know, exciting projects which are technology-led. And, you know, and I'm a good example of being able to start at an apprenticeship level. You know, and I've held seven managing director jobs throughout my time, uh, all related to defence. So you know, I'm a good example of you know hard work and being interested 
you know, then you know the sky's the limit. So you know, the pathways through the Naval Shipbuilding College, through universities, graduate fairs, direct apprenticeship schemes. But there's lots of opportunities out there. Uh, you know, just just being able to kind of Google BA systems on on the internet will give you the quickest access to what's available right now. Yeah, it's really cool to be involved with such a big company because like you said, you can start off as an apprenticeship, like if that's, you want to be on the tools and you want to be learning the ins and outs, but then you can be sitting there in a suit and tie like yourself, um, you know, overseeing projects and, you know, being more in the board boardroom sort of situation. So it's certainly not one size fits all. And I, I'm sure once you're in with a great company like BA Systems, um, like you said, you know, the sky's the limit. Like you can, you it's, can... it's, it's so easy now to, to start as an apprenticeship uh, and you know, and work your way through the system. So you know, it's much easier now to come in as an apprenticeship. And, and if you're not quite sure that you have the academic abilities to come in as a graduate, then I would also offer that an apprenticeship is a good starting position. And, and I think if you are motivated, you're keen to learn, you'll find the support and such as BA systems that will help you get there, uh, you know, and whilst you might not just have the confidence to start uh, as a graduate and intern straight away. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Craig. If students are listening, they can obviously head to the BA systems website or the Explore Careers website, which I'll link down below. But we appreciate your time today and uh, thank you so much. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye-bye.